who we are sitting here with Ben Kaufman from the great Yonder Mountain String Band, and we're at Del Fest 12. And uh, Ben, it's great to see you, and uh, a real pleasure to meet you. And let's just start out by let me ask you, uh, how you doing? And um, could you tell us how did uh, how did it all start for you? The whole music scene, the, just getting into the music. Well, I'm doing great. Um, it's hard to it's hard to be doing bad at Del Fest, you know. Um, I uh, how did I get started with music? Um, I was born into a, a, a musical family. Um, my father was a musician, and so I kind of grew up um, grew up with uh, seeing his bands um, playing, and that, he was a, a big band jazz musician. So that was the music that was around and being played a lot in my house. And then um, it's kind of like I guess like a lot of people, you know, uh, I had to take piano lessons um, from an early age. And then uh, school band, like we still had music programs in schools. Yeah. Um, and I had a, a really good teacher uh, for music in school. And then uh, around about sixth grade or so, I got to pick uh, an instrument to play. And with the guidance of the, my music teacher from school, he said, he said to my father, he's like, you know, your son's, he's a fine piano player, but he's not a piano player. He's a bass player, and I'd never played the bass before. And uh, but he and my dad, you know, like music, music speak or musicians speak. They you can kind of like talk to musicians, and they just kind of vibed it out that I was this. I was a bass player. Have you right. seen him again since? Yeah. Oh, he came to the last show we played in Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. He's pr he's pretty proud, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, it turns out like he was right. So I got a three-quarter size electric bass and you know it didn't couldn't didn't have any strength in my fingers it, these were the only ones that worked so I played like that and uh, we put together a band uh, I was in sixth grade and it was me and a couple seventh graders put together a band and just started playing like cover tunes and stuff and was your dad involved at all with you playing? Like, was he just, as another musician? Um, in encouragement, you know. Yeah. Um, we definitely played music together in the house, you he know. A singer as well? Um, no, no. Uh, he would, he would sing, you know, like Sinatra tunes. Sit down at the piano, right. sing, play that. But he, did you take singing lessons to get to where you're at now? No, nope, I took. Um, I was in. Um, oh, you know, some like musical theater throughout junior high school and high school um, and some choir stuff madrigals I really enjoyed um, that but it's not uh, most of my almost all of my musical instruction was um, was bass and um, and piano but really by the time I got to I had one you know who I'd consider like my my mentor musical mentor uh, and I studied with him, but it was a lot less about technique and um, than it was sort of uh, ear training or um, transcriptions or uh, really just a, but more just about life. You know, he, I was, it was he was a guy. He was a bass player. He was a composer. He was a pianist as well. But he also had a day job and he was raising a family. And he's so it was a lot more like. Uh, about like so hey you want to be a musician huh well this is what it looks like and this is what I have to do in order to be able to play music and support my family and you know put a roof over our heads and, and it still look it looked great to you you were all in well yeah I didn't have you know I kind I didn't really have anything else that I felt like I was particularly good at and uh, you know I was whatever I could you know I was good in school but I didn't have anything that called to me um, the uh, I took at a little bit of a detour right about somewhere halfway through high school this mentor that I was telling you about he got killed at a gig oh and gig. yeah it was a, he was subbing on bass for uh, for I don't even know what um, and it was at a uh, Howard Johnson's right ballroom Wow! and there was a, an illegal propane tank set up and it exploded and he got killed and it was some you know shitty gig after that, I was sort of like, I was very much, uh, you know, as a young person, and it really, for the first time, dealing with 
a tragedy, you know, in any to that degree or of that impact, you know. I sort of went like, well, gosh, this so music, huh? And like, kind of started to hurt to How think old about were it. You at that time about? I was maybe 14, yeah. 15. Um, and I just had this association at that point, like here this guy was and he was doing one of his friends a favor to take the gig and it was some shitty gig anyway and he got killed for it and like, oh, is that, is that really what I want to do? And I kind of convinced myself that it wasn't, but I still wanted to do something creative. So um, I decided to go to film school. I was always had a passing interest in, um, in film and video. And right about that time was when um, the technology put uh, video. It was it was widely available at home. I mean, the can you know the cameras were still big and everything, but you could do some cool stuff. So I got into animation and wow. uh, and decided to see if I could get into a good film school. And I did. Um, ended up in New York City studying film for a couple years. Wow. But and really stopped playing music almost entirely. Um, and thought I wanted to be, I don't know, thought I wanted to be a director or something. What do you know when you're, you know, 18 or whatever. Yeah, why not? But I thought, sure, I want to do that. And, and I got to film school and I realized right away, all these other people, they think about film the way I think about music. And it took that, like, m being immersed in this whole other scene, seeing people who were genuinely into it and realizing I just wasn't. I like movies, right? But I don't necessarily think, you know, I'm not cut out for that right. world. Um, and so I went, you know, that was a good realization for me. That's the same time uh, I started listening to uh, the band Fish. Oh, yeah. And they, uh, they kind of took me out of the, uh, the, the musical, sort of the genres of music I was listening to at the time. And when I heard them, I just was, I, I don't know why, it felt very, uh, I appreciated uh, and identified a, uh, uh, their technique and talent uh, on their instruments but it also there was a freedom to what they were doing and the way that they performed their music and it, it uh, sparked something you in mean, me uh, improv well improv I was listening to a lot of music that had improvisation in it but it wasn't free like that and uh, and also, you know, I'm looking at these guys, there they are on stage, they kind of, they reminded me of me, like they're a little geeky, they're a little nerdy, and, but they're, they're wicked good, you know? And it, but it seemed approachable as, uh, you know, having, you know, learned a lot of their music over the years too, realizing just how talented they are. Um, but, it's, but it comes across very, uh, as a very approachable thing. And certainly that's how it struck me. So that got me back into music. I started to, um, to then, you know, from them have my uh, musical sort of landscape opened up more. I'm still living in New York, but trying to figure out where I was going to go. I didn't want to be there anymore. Um, and then I went down to the to the uh, Wetlands Club in New York City. That's not there anymore, but it was yeah. a great, um, yeah. great venue. Sure. And I went down there to see Colonel Bruce Hampton and Aquarium Rescue Unit. And they had a band opening for him that I'd never heard of called Leftover Salmon. <laughs> and we got there early, cause my, I was with my my, uh, my buddy, and he's like, oh, we gotta get there early, okay. So we got there early, and all of a sudden Leftover Salmon came out on stage, and I went, what is that? <laughs> like, where, how, how do you do that? And what even is that? And like, where does that come from? Like, where do these guys come from that they're making music like this? And so I did research, and I'm like, okay, Colorado, huh? And at that time, I was really looking for direction. And so I, once I found out where, that they were from Colorado and that's where that music was coming from, that's where I wanted to be. So I left, uh, I left school in New York City and transferred out to school well, in Colorado. What was that about? That would have been 1990, uh, the fall, the spring of 1995. Yeah, and it's going into the summer of 95. So by the end of the summer of 95, I was in... Boulder, um, going to school, but really, um, at that time, it was, for whatever reason, it was, it was very inexpensive for me to go to school there, and so I had, I, I was really just kind of, you know, wasting time trying to put a band together, and put together a bunch of different um, projects in the next couple of years, all very derivative of, of Fish and what they were doing. That A lot of people were kind of 
that. Uh, I, mean, I still see it too. I mean, they've they've changed the they've created a whole scene, but um, that was what I, you know putting together electric bands and trying to you know do our best you know fish interpretation, and then uh, I uh, along the way well once I uh, going back I guess a little bit some somewhere around high school beginning of high school I got a uh, an upright bass. You know, my dad wanted me to know how to play it, and every now and then I'd I'd fill in for his bass player for his band. Um, but not that I was very good, but um, I could get by. And so I had the an upright bass. I was just sitting there, and I went into the music store in Boulder one day, and they saw this index card and said, "Hey, do you have an upright bass? Do you want to learn how to play bluegrass? You know, come, we'll you know play in our band, and we'll teach you, and you'll get paid." And so I joined a band. They all had day jobs. They called themselves Mountain Standard Time. And there's actually another band called Mountain Standard Time playing right now in Colorado that's not related to them. But these were, like, there was a banker and there was a guy who worked construction and, you know, a couple other guys, you know, uh, that were in their, you know, they had their day jobs and then they'd play bluegrass. And so they gave me the gig. And it was a lot of, like, you know, here's a crash course in the history of bluegrass music and these are all the important people and the important songs and you know the uh and uh um you know you're speeding up you're slowing down your intonation's out like it was real you know crash course and so i kind of got the got to to learn how to do that and uh and got paid you know which is cool it was the first time i'd ever gotten paid to play music really and um as that as i learned more and learned, you know, did, it was purely a cover band, you know. Um, I started to um, write songs or hear songs in a bluegrass style in my head. And I wanted to be able to play them. But that band wasn't, you know, they were just doing, like, standards, you know. So then I, re- I had to put together my own band. So I formed my own bluegrass band. And we called that Tree Full of Pigs. And that was a really cool band. We had a... Armando Zuppa, uh, this guy from Italy playing banjo, he's wicked good. Um, Ross Martin playing guitar. Ross has gone on to have an incredible um, career. He's one of the finest guitar players you'll ever um, run across. And Kerry Messenger playing mandolin. He had a great voice, good singing voice. Um, and we started to play you know, some cover tunes, but some original tunes too. And then that band had a gig up in Nederland, Colorado. And it was at that gig where I first met Jeff Austin, who would be the mandolin player in Yonder. So we'd, and then like he gave me his card, or wrote down his number, I should say, on a piece of paper. And he was like, yeah, I've got my, my buddy's moving to town. He plays banjo. You know, we should pick. And i got to be honest with you, at the time, I had like three different bands going on. And I'm like, I don't know, you know. And maybe a month passed, and he called me or I called him, I forget. And, He's like, yeah, we're getting together tonight and you're going to have this big pick. You should come up. And so I did. I uh, went up to Nederland from Boulder, brought my bass. And Jeff was there, Dave Johnston, who was the friend that Jeff was talking about, had just gotten to town. And uh, they had independently met Adam um, Agela, who played guitar, plays guitar, obviously. And so we, like, it was a big pick. I want to say Vince from Leftover Salmon was there, a bunch of, you know, local people. Um, but we snuck off, the four of us, to sing together, um, you know, pick and sing. And I think we sang Pig in a Pen. And we, and we had, like, the, we found our harmony parts pretty naturally and sang well together. We were all at the same age. We didn't have jobs. We didn't have girlfriends. And by the end of that, de- that night, it was basically like, you want to be in a band? You know, and so we did, and uh, we had uh, we had a, such a string of good luck and good fortune in the early years of that band. But How'd you come up with the name? Picked it out of a book. We had a gig opening for our friends in a band called Runaway Truck Ramp, um, which was a sort of a bluegrass hybrid band um, coming out of Colorado. They had a gig at the Fox Theater for their album release party, and it was a sold-out show. And they asked us to open for them. So our first, our debut. To Bol- in Boulder and call in that Colorado music scene was a sold-out show in front of very like-minded people, and we needed. They're like, "We, what's your band name? We need to put something up on the marquee." I'm like, "Shit!" Uh, so Jeff had a book called an anthology of folk music called "Sing Out," 
and we, it was all songs and like old magazines and we're just flipping through and we knew we wanted to be a something something string band or something quartet and uh we picked and he, we flipped you tried to flip to one page i forget what it was that didn't work and flipped to the next page and there it was yonder the song was uh, at the foot of yonder mountain and we look at each other like yonder mountain string band and we're like that sounds good wow. you know <laughs> roll with it so then we went down to boulder for that gig and there there it was up on the marquee you know and there's a sold out show and there's everybody was there and you know, like everybody liked us you know i want to say we even had some original tunes at that point even though we didn't that was our first gig and from there it just took off man you know like we had you know we played a bunch of gigs locally had some got some uh support from a a, a brewery called mountain sun the Mountain Sun was every Sunday they'd have music at their brewery. They've gone on to sort of conquer the Colorado brewing world, but they have always supported music and loved music. So they kind of helped us out, and, and Leftover Salmon helped us out with some gigs and making phone calls on our behalf and getting us into some festivals. And boy, before you knew it, we were just on the road and playing, like getting having really good gigs, and that just kept growing and growing. And you know, uh, so that's sort of the. So the, how old were you then? I was 23 when Yonder started. And yeah. you, I bet your folks were pretty psyched for you as well. <laughs> well, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Now, keep in mind, Dad was a musician too. He had a day job, but he was a musician. And in his heart of hearts, what he wanted to do with his life was to be in a band. He, he met my mom at one of his... He had a rock band in the 70s. He met my mom at a gig, uh -huh. right? So he was like a rock and roller at heart. And he always, I think, if he could have, he would have liked to have been, you know, a musician for his gig. Um, and so when I showed an aptitude, and then, you know, and they kind of knew what was going on. Like I did my film school experiment, went out to Boulder and, you know, uh, playing music. And finally called him and said, um, you know, I, I think I'm going to drop out of school. Uh, there's this band, and, you know, I think it's going to be a thing. And they're like, oh, you know, cautious, you know, like, we, you sure? Like, well, no, I'm not sure, but I think, you know, that it's going to be a thing, and I can't do, you know, we're, we got gigs, and I can't do these, night like, the classes that I was taking in college were all at night, and, uh, and early morning, too, and that just doesn't work, you know? So, and I'm like, I think i got to try this. They're like, okay, well, you know, what kind of music is it? Rock and roll? I'm like, no, it's bluegrass. I'm sorry, it's what? It's bluegrass. You know, which I think is probably the, I don't know what more shocking, you know. You re, so you're telling me you're going to have a, you're going to drop out of school and you're going to join a bluegrass band and you think it's going to work. I'm like, yeah, got a feeling, right? And then sure enough, it's, it, it worked. And, you know, it worked pretty quickly. And so they were able to see, like, right away, you know, that the decision was a correct one. And then, of course, mom and dad became the biggest fans. Yeah. You know, mom still is. She's she goes a couple shows a year, and she's like festival mom. Everybody, every, right. she's everybody's mom. So, so now the years have progressed, and everything is different because now you actually, I assume business it's a business it's you you have roles that you weren't used to having you have decisions to make it's not just four guys who are like hey this is cool so now how's things now like different and how, how do you well it's make been it works i mean i know you must have a team with you that yeah the, it's it's quite a bit different than it was i mean you know uh, the the, the four original members of Yonder, we parted ways, and Jeff is doing his own band now, um, and we hired um, Jake Jolliffe and Ali Kroll um, to play music with us. And so, and it's quite a bit different. You know, the, uh, the, the sound is different. The, um, you know, it's... Uh, Seems you just keep getting bigger and bigger, though. I well, I think we're... The love is tremendous mm -hmm. that people have for you. The audiences seem to be getting bigger and bigger it's it's definitely um you know it's a blessing to get to do this right um and we do have people who have stuck with us you know and can still come out to see the shows and sure. you know if it <clears throat> my favorite obviously is getting to play festivals like this you know 
<coughs> excuse me, you get, you show up, you've got a captive audience of however many thousands of people, right? And your job is to just go out there and entertain them and, you know, bring the fire as best you can, right? That's the, that's the most fun. Playing outside, you know, weather's nice, everybody's having a good time. That's my favorite part of it. Um, but yeah, you know, like it's a, it is a business and we've got... Do you, do you have a family now? Of yeah, um, have a son, married with, uh, have a son, he's seven. Um, one and done for me. Are you, are you prepared for him to uh, uh, do something where you might say, hey, uh, be cautious? <laughs> sure. You know, if, honestly, like uh, we, we talk about it amongst ourselves. I don't know that I would wish a career in the music business for him. Um, I don't know, and he's only seven. I'm certainly, you know, encouraging him with music, um, not making, not doing the enforced, you know, lessons. Right. But all my instruments are available to him. He's, right. you know, we, he's. But you, you sort of, uh, from from what you're saying now, your path was was almost like blessed. Like you didn't sound like you really. Uh, uh, you know, struggled as much. I'm sure there was struggle, but you were like in school at a point when all of a sudden there, it took off. So like you didn't have a rock bottom really. No. So you're real fortunate in that way. It, and and people seem to even with the with the band disruption and change seems to have uh, worked out for everyone. Is it? Yeah, so far. I mean, knock on wood, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. And uh, and it is of, you know, whether it's just, you know, just a tremendous, certainly tremendous good fortune, blessings coming from wherever they yeah. come from, and hard work, you know. But we never um, we never had the, the real... And of course, it, we I roman we romanticize as we look back in time. Right. You know, there's certainly a lot, you know a lot of long drives for no money, sure. and you know dr like grinding. But we didn't have to grind as hard or as long as a lot of people yeah. that we know. Now, when when uh, you're say, you know, you, you said before to me, there's an upcoming album that you know is is somewhere in the future. And uh, how does that album differ from, say, your first album, as far as like songwriting and uh, band coordinating uh, the music itself? Uh, the process is is very similar um, in that you know the the songwriters in the band we kind of have an idea and you, you sort of flesh it out to the best of your ability and show it to everybody and you know, have your, your friends help bring it home, you know. So it's um, stayed the same over the years. But the process, for, the for, for me anyway, it has. Yeah. I, I've always been, Adam and Dave have uh, have developed more of a collaborative songwriting process. I'm much more of a loner when it comes to the songs that I write. I, I tend to uh, want to show up with them mo mostly done um, to, you know, have the lyrics be something that I'm trying to, you know, personal to me, something that I'm trying to express. Um, but I've certainly gotten a lot of help from everybody as well uh, when I need it, you know. And Jake and Allie, they're, are they like the, the, the kids of the band? Yeah, they're the new kids. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's been, they've, we've been playing music with them now for five years, but still think of them as the new kids. Yeah. Um, you know, they, uh, they are, Jake writes uh, a lot of instrumentals. Um, Allie is interested in writing, but hasn't found like the, I think that you know the right the right partnership. I think that it will take. She'll find somebody to to co-write with a lot her. Of, uh, power with the audience. You people think? Really, yeah. just yeah. You know. Yeah, some people are born with it, and yeah. she was. She's a weak. I think of it as the this X factor. Yeah. I don't exactly know what it is, right, right. but um, I've seen the. I've seen it be the case where she steps up to the microphone and is about to play a fiddle solo. And they're already cheering. Yeah, but you know, insane. yeah, and that's before she's even started. Yeah. And you know, I'm me as the bass player. I'm looking over like, well, that's not fair. Come <laughs> on, how do you, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, uh, but she's yeah, she's uh, ugh, she's they broke the mold with her. Yeah. So what's in the future? You got you got an album coming out? Yeah, I'm not sure. We just got out of the studio. We'll, we're gonna be rather than um, just t with with schedules. Um, being what they are, we're going to release um, a series of EPs rather than waiting the 
duration of time that it takes to get an album out. Right. I think in this day and age too, it's, it's sort of the. I mean, albums are you can you can maybe get a little bit more press if you have an album rather than an EP. But anymore, if you got a song, record the song and put it out. It's not like people are buying CDs anyway. Uh, it's all you digital, guys are you know. Certainly in a position where uh, whatever you do, uh, you're gonna get the attention. So I think you could write your own uh, whatever it is you want to. Yeah, do. we just want to. Once we have the stuff recorded, we just want to put it out. And so we're gonna and and also starting to think of um, of concepts for some of these recordings. The next, the, I know the next album that we're gonna put out that's gonna be a full album will be uh, more of a concept where we all sit down together with a theme or, or a story or something and we write to that theme or to that story. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna um, put out this next EP. Uh, hopefully it'll be out in a, you know, could be out even in a month. Um, and then we'll follow that up with another one that's gonna be more, um, punk rock or uh, at the very least alternative um, do a couple covers on it a couple original tunes that we wrote that are maybe that have more of that spirit um, and then we're gonna put out uh, <clears throat> we'll follow that one up with um, a lot of old songs that we have that just were never recorded I mean we've got like 25 or 30 old songs that just that show up in the set and that are like classics in our world you know but um, were never recorded for some reason so we're going to put those down, get those recorded, and put those out. Well, that's that's great. Yeah. That's terrific. Well, thanks for talking to us. Sure. And uh, it was really fascinating hearing everything you said. And we all look forward to everything you guys do in the future. And we'll be at all the shows. And we can't wait to see you again and hear the new albums. And thanks for all your time, man. Yeah, appreciate it.